<laughs> Osiris gets decked by a knight, the guardian. Welp, sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to Destiny 2. Uh, in today's video, we're going to do a kind of quick, short and simple summary of the Vidoc that Bungie put up today. Uh, we're going to kind of, I got a list of bullet points, we're going to go through them. Uh, I have Chini and Reese here with me. Hello. What's up? Right. And, uh, yeah, let's just get started. Uh, I guess the first thing that I have bullet pointed, my bullet points are not in order, that is my fault. Uh, Aramis and the her killing the Servitor thing. And how big of a deal that is for anyone who knows anything about Fallen. Uh, for anyone who isn't, who doesn't know or isn't as well versed in the lore, basically servitors are kind of holy beings to the fallen. Uh, they basically provide them with whatever the fallen equivalent of food is. So the fact that Aramis just straight up destroys one of them in front of all the fallen in the video, that has to send a powerful message. Uh, I don't think Aramis is screwing around. There's yeah, actually, if you, sorry, Reese, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, I agree. When I first saw that, I was like, wow. Yeah, they, they like, worship the servitors. Yeah, they, like, depend on them to survive. So, I was like, something crazy is going on here with that, uh, I guess they have the stasis in that, um, that particular point now. So, yeah, it's getting, getting crazy. My favorite yeah. part is, uh, I'll let you talk just after this to me. Uh, when she does it, if you watch the Vidoc, one of the Fallen grabs his heart. <laughs> He's like, oh god, no. Yeah, yeah all oh, their reactions oh. are pretty funny. Yeah, all of them, they're just like, jumping back, like, oh my gosh. What did you, she just had to do? Go ahead and say what you were going to say, Jenny. Um, I was just going to say, I'm kind of wondering, like, what their, like, because that's like their food source, right? They produce ether for them, and that's kind of how they survive. Yeah, and... that's like the nearest enough approximation. It's not exactly food, but that's the closest that a, apparently humans can like comprehend the... Yeah. So, I'm like wondering, like, does the darkness just satiate them in a different way, or like, how are they going to sustain themselves? Yeah, well, that's kind of a thing, is we don't know. Yeah. Like, the Scorn were able to sustain themselves off of, I, I, I guess, it essentially necromancy. Ether. And, yeah, Dark Aether. But, yeah, pretty big deal. Pretty cool. Pretty excited. Uh, the next thing I have, the season launching alongside Beyond Light is going to be called The Season of the Hunt. Uh, it is apparently about... I will put the roadmap somewhere on the video, guys, so that you can understand this a little better. Um, the Season of the Hunt is essentially, I don't know the exact details, but something to do with Zivu Arath, who the three, like, oh, what are they called, Ginny? The uh, the original or siblings. Or Oryx, or Savathun, and Zivu Arath. What were they called? They were just the daughters of Oryx, weren't they? No. The Oryx cannot be a daughter of Oryx. They're the original three hive gods. Whatever. Um. Well, I think Genie's cutting out again. Um, I don't remember their names, guys. I'll put it on screen when I figure it out. But, um... Zebu Arath was one of Oryx's sisters... She is the third and probably least well-known of the original Hive God trilogy. Uh, apparently, she is invading the system now, and we have to go deal with that. And that's kind of the whole thing about Season of the Hunt. Thoughts on that? Uh-oh. Reese, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, so okay. is that... Is that like our raid then? Is that what? Um... No, that's the that's gonna be the seasonal content, like oh, from the season okay. class. I see. So yeah, I mean, so she's a a sibling. She's Oryx's oh, sister. No, Oryx. Okay. Crota was Oryx's son. 
Oh, okay. All right. We got you. Yeah. Okay. So she's probably pretty powerful. Um. Here, yeah. Yeah. I just, just imagine it's gonna be. It might be a, a strike or. No, know, maybe, it's maybe just she's, a mission. She's doing something with some kind of. I think they called them cryptoglyphs. She's like corrupting Hive and Fallen, and we have to stop her from doing that. Oh. Okay. Isn't it essentially going to be like the next just seasonal activity that we have to grind? Like this, uh, not escalation. Um, like the, oh my goodness, I can't even think right now. The ships that we have to go, the darkness ships and all that. Yeah. But interestingly, it's actually not, that stuff isn't coming out right when Beyond Light comes out. Beyond Light comes out on the 10th. All of the seasonal activity stuff comes out on the 17th. Yeah, I like that. Gives you time to get through the, like, the new DLC content and then get into the seasonal stuff. Yeah. Um, there was a, a really interesting scene, or at least interesting to me, in the trailer, where Zavala and Osiris were standing there looking at a map with some Cabal Centurions. Yeah, I think that is insane. And I think that goes along with the, uh... Like we were just talking about Zeva or Ath. Um, because didn't they say that she's kind of like not really taking, but kind of the same kind of yeah, she's thing. corrupting. Yeah, she's the so, hive god of war. Yeah, so she's like turning all of the other powers of darkness and stuff to her side so that she can raise an army, and that's pretty dope. And now that the Cabal are standing with us, maybe they're trying to become, like, friends with us so they can fight back and keep their territory and stuff and their power. Yeah, interestingly enough, the Cabal that were standing with them had Red Legion insignias on them, which would be a tenuous alliance at best, I would say. Yeah. Um, also, for Zavala to be standing with Cabal, I mean, there has to be some serious stuff going down. <laughs> yeah. Very Osiris. big enemy of my aunt. Yeah, Osiris I could almost see, because Osiris does weird stuff like that. But for Zavala to do it, there's that's pretty heavy. Yeah, when I first saw that in the video, I was like, what is going on? This did, this did not happen before. I was very, very confused. See what brought them to come together like that. Um... Thoughts on the crow, aka Aldrin, and Osiris, and the scene we were discussing before we started with the knight. Oh, I think that's pretty wicked. Um, obviously, um, Aldrin was awakened by a ghost, and he had a Forsaken there. Um, Who's called Pulled Pork, by the way, in case anyone forgot. Aldrin's ghost's <laughs> name is Pulled Pork. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. But yeah, he was awakened, and it's just, um, it was just a matter of time before we saw him again, really, I guess. So. You only to wait two All I gotta years. <laughs> Go ahead, Genie, sorry. <laughs> um, pretty much the only thing is, I understand the whole, uh, your memory is wiped and everything when you're reawoken as a guardian, but I've still got my eye on that double crossing person yeah. that I can't say mean names yeah, about. I was gonna say, let's, let's keep it PG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyone yeah, that, that kind of goes back to Zavala and the Cabal and the whole tenuous alliances thing we were just talking about. Um, Honestly, I trust them more than Aldrin. <laughs> the Cabal? The people who literally destroyed the city? <laughs> They're more trustworthy than Aldrin. Oh... Uh, the next thing was when they described Europa, they Aldrin referred. Aldrin killed Kid. Oh, Chini's really behind, guys. Sorry about that. Here, let me try and fix this. Okay, we'll uh, we'll move on to the next bullet point while Chini sorts itself out. Uh, they described Europa as a time capsule and having much of the map set underground. We've seen the map, um, you can't see my hands, but I'm doing that in air quotes, of the Europa play space. 
it might be much bigger than we originally anticipated if there is as much underground area as they claim. Oh yeah, I mean like, when you think about the moon, it just keeps expanding and sprawling underneath. Um, and it really is just more and more rooms and tombs and enemies here and there, so really yeah, the, the brought a is lot. Huge. To, yeah, so is that kind of like the um, equivalent to uh, what's going to be going on in Europa? And there's a whole, like, there's a the, the uh, factory for the Exos is down there, right? So that's got to take up a pretty large space. Yeah, um... If it is as big as they claim, Europa could be an even bigger destination than the moon. Um, which is crazy to me, because the moon is probably one of the larger, if not maybe the largest, destination that we have in-game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chini, have you sorted yourself out yet? Can you hear me? Yes. Am I normal? Yes. Would you like yeah. to comment on the Europa moon map size thing? Yeah, it, it's pretty big, I think, and from everything they're saying, it sounds like it's going to be awesome, and I love it, but that is, I guess, can't really tell for sure until the day, but yeah, it's I have hard high to, hope. It's hard to tell, because Bungie does, uh, one thing that Bungie does exceptionally well is drive hype. Yes. Um, but yeah, like you said, I have, I have pretty high hopes, too. Uh, initially, I assumed Europa was going to be smaller than Forsaken, but if what they're saying and talking up is true, it could be on par, if not maybe even bigger. Yeah. Um. Oh, they showed a brief shot of what I assume was the entrance to the Deepstone Crypt Raid, because there were six Guardians standing there in kind of the traditional raid cinematic ship fly-in, and it appeared to be underground. Which could be interesting. Um, kind of like uh, Vault of Glassy or something? Yeah, well, like, they looked like they were in a big, kind of arctic, underground glacial cave uh, when they showed the picture, so... And obviously it's hard to tell from the little brief snippet that we got, but it could be really cool if the entire raid was based underground. Yeah. Reese, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and yeah, like you said, it looks underground. And, um, and, uh, you know, there's six, um, guardians, and it appears that they're walking through the, that, uh, the, it's in the, the Exo, uh, factory as well. There's six, um, walking through that space at, uh, one time, so, yeah, it looks Crazy. Yeah, it looks lots of snow in there and it looks underground. Yeah, in some sort of like cavern. Like a really like you know how um they have just bottomless pits but then they just make the uh, place uh or in the middle of that. It seems like one of those areas uh, that are common in Destiny. Yeah. I have a bullet point here, but I don't know what I meant by it, so I'm gonna gloss over that. Um <laughs> there's a scene very, very briefly, it's only about two or three seconds. Um, but it looks like the scene in which we might gain our stasis powers. Um, the Guardian is clearly in a Clovis Bray facility. There are Clovis Bray logos on the floor. And there is a shard, or like one of the little mini pyramid scale things in there. Um, a lot of people are speculating that this could be Clovis Bay Bray research done before kind of the original collapse back in the Golden Age, and maybe what caused the original collapse. You guys have any thoughts on that? Oh, is that when the stranger is sitting there with that small, um, like a chest, and she flips it open, and you can see that triangle in there? No. Uh, this is oh. much later on in the vid. Oh, okay. Uh, um, uh, it's I know, very I know what brief. You're talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, and, um... Yeah, I don't know what to make of it, but it I don't know if it's where we're going to get our powers and stuff, but yeah, I, I really don't know what to say. I'm just kind of word vomiting. Yeah, it's hard to uh, 
draw any conclusions from it. I just found it kind of interesting. It does very much look like a scene, like when we gain a new subclass, like the ones in Taking King, um, where you go, you do the special mission and get struck by lightning a lot for the Warlock, or you go pick up the Void Hunter's bow, or you go to Mercury and pick up and forge a Titan hammer. It very much looks like a one of those kind of cutscene things. Yeah. I'm I'm betting that the uh, little shard that uh, the stranger was opening up in the little box or whatever, I'm guessing that's probably the artifact. Uh, that would, I think, that makes sense to me. I can't remember. I think they've shown us a picture of the artifact in the Vidoc, didn't they? Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, the they roadmap, there was a brief snippet where they showed a loadout, um when they were discussing the new stasis subclass tree and where it would be located and stuff. And I think the artifact was in the lower corner. I can't remember what it was, though. <clears throat> um, it looks like a lantern some, of some sort. It may be a placeholder in the video, too. It's hard to tell. Maybe. Um, the new mini version of Insurrection Prime... There's a really brief clip, but it says it belongs to the House of Salvation. Which, I thought Aramis's house belonged to the... I thought she was the Empire of Darkness, wasn't she? Isn't that what they've been claiming? Or the House of Darkness? Um, Empire of Darkness. Yeah. So, interesting that we have a House of Salvation mini insurrection prime um it kind of makes me wonder if maybe there's gonna be even more going on than we originally anticipated or maybe something was just misnamed but that seems unlikely uh oh there are new so we've seen as far as new enemies go we've seen the mini insurrection primes and we've seen the fallen lieutenants um and the new Vex guy. But there was also in the trailer um, a couple times, they showed a picture of what looked like a new version of a knight, a hive knight. Um, so maybe there are more new enemy types than uh, we originally anticipated. Well, I'm guessing if they're corrupted or whatever by uh, Shiva or Wrath, they're probably going to be slightly different. Yeah, and that this picture that I'm talking about specifically did come up when they were talking about the seasonal content, so that's probably yeah. a pretty good guess. Um, I also saw, it's not a new enemy really, but I saw a heavy shank with like a semi-new model, so new skins on enemies, which is cool, I guess. <clears throat> um, the new public event or what I assume is going to be a public event or a Europa-based event where the weird-looking pyramid ship rectangle thing crashes into the snow. Kind of right at the start of the Vidoc. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I hope it's a new public event because we really need new public events that are interesting <laughs> and not the same thing that we've been getting in seasonal content. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, it made um, a pretty big uh, splash when it landed, so... Yeah, my worry is it's gonna be... Like war, war sat, sat down. down. Yeah, War sat down 2.0. Oh, man. But, yeah. so far, Bungie has disproven a lot of my skepticism, so... Maybe there's hope. Um... <clears throat> at the very bottom of the roadmap, which I will put here as well if I haven't already put it in the video, um, it lists all the new exotics, notably the, there are two notable ones that, one we knew about that they haven't talked about, and one that I don't recall ever hearing of. Hawkmoon is listed in the roadmap of exotics at the bottom. Also one called Duality, which is the one I don't remember ever hearing about. Has that come up before to either of you? I don't remember it, but... I also don't remember a lot of things, so... <laughs> yeah, I don't recall a duality. Um, so, 
running theories at the moment, mine are either that's the season pass exotic, or Hawkmoon is the season pass exotic and that's the raid exotic. I I think duality will be the season pass exotic. I'm guessing Hawkmoon is going to be a like secret chest or not secret chest secret quest gun. Because didn't they say in the Vidoc something about uh, unraveling Europa's secrets or something like that? Yes, but there was also only one exotic quest listed, and it was for the Salvation Script Grenade Launcher. Which there could be more, but that was the only one they listed specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah, those were kind of my bullet points. Um, oh. While we're on the topic of exotics, did anyone else think that the sword was kind of underwhelming? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it hit a barrier, or no, I, um... Yeah, an uh, anti-barrier, it was a servitor, and it did, like, maybe a, an eighth, maybe a sixth of the health. So, I thought it was, like, a quarter, but still, yeah. It wasn't much, so... Yeah, I, I was expecting, like, for... Because, like we said in the previous video... Um, barrier champions, in my opinion, are the easiest to kill, and uh, I don't really want to have an exotic sword to have to kill them. I I don't need an exotic sword. I just use temptation, so I can fall in guillotine. Yeah. And once their barrier drops, even if they're fully healed, they can't put another one up before you can kill them with a normal sword. So. Yeah. Um. Oh, thoughts about artifact power being dis... I don't know if they've done this before, but artifact power is disabled for day one rating. Yeah, I think they've done that before. I like it. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they've done the artifact disabled, but they've done uh, like I know a they've challenge done a hard, version. Like a hard power yeah. cap. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, isn't that what this is, too? Uh, the well, there's a hard the power cap in that. Oh, I don't know about that. I know there's a I hard power cap in that you that. can only go to a certain power. Oh, I thought I, I heard something about the day one challenge thing. You was like, you could only be so much. Like it was 20 levels or something lower. I thought I could be completely wrong, but uh, it sounds familiar. I think they've done things like that in the past, so it very it very well could be kind of levels the playing field for everyone instead of having all the super tryhards being 30 levels above everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would, wouldn't want, like, if I was a developer, I guess they, they kind of make a big deal about the day one, uh, the first completes. Um, whoever first completed the raid, they kind of get rewards and stuff. And stuff. I wouldn't want to give it... First. What's that? The race to worlds first. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't want to give it to a team that was just insanely like overranked and was actually like qualified for the raid. I would want to give it to people who um, showed that they had skill and really good team coordination and figured out the best way to do it while they were severely handicapped. And uh, implementing that power cap, I think, is a great way to see who's actually the true guardians. Yeah. Um. That was the end of my bullet points. Do you guys have anything you want to add? Uh, yeah. Uh, would you yeah, like you to go. go Reef? You go ahead. We've uh, discussed more about their plan of making the season less bounty reliant. Ah, oh, yeah. But I didn't hear anything about that, to my knowledge. Well, they've said, like, the people who hoard bounties, they've nerfed the amount of stuff you can get for hoarding bounties. Um, I've made some enemies so any bounties you hoard, bounties hoarded from activities that are going away will just be removed from your inventory to be on light launches. Bounties from this season, um, from things like Crucible, uh, Strikes, uh, Gambit, will only drop power level gear up to this season's max cap, which is 1060, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you can't, start beyond light just hoarding bounties and then be 1080 before you ever leave the tower uh, the only thing hoarding bounties will do for you now is just if you want to rank your season pass faster um, 
which Reese and I were talking about this a little bit, I normally do um, for a regular seasonal drop, but on big content drops, like the fall expansion drops, I don't worry about it as much because I know there's going to be enough content that I'll play for two or three weeks, which is more than enough time to clear a season pass anyway. So. Yeah, you're very true. I'm also doing it for um, uh, artifact level up as well. Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, you just then have to have a you have to have an inventory full of bounties and can't pick up any new ones until you acquire the artifact, which is usually pretty quickly. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, <clears throat> Bungie's really playing with uh, guardian morality and the question of are we the good guys a lot in this, and I kind of like it. It it puts forward an interesting narrative. Um, I think as far as the story goes, this is the most vested I've ever been in a Destiny story. Yeah. Apart from maybe when Cade died. Um, but that was more just like, why did you do this? I'm going to kill you. Rather than just, <laughs> I actually want to know what's happening and tell me what's going on. Um, do you think any of the theories of Cade coming back in the Deepstone Crypt is like true or has any merit to them? Or do you think it's not going to happen or not possible? It's not going to happen, and I can tell you why, but it's really meta, so <laughs> anyone who wants Cade to come back, tune out now, because I'm going to crush your dreams. Nathan Fillion is Cade Six's voice actor. The reason that he was killed off in the first place is because he got a new TV show, and he wanted to work on his TV show rather than voice acting for Destiny. The TV show is, to my knowledge, still running. I don't think he's going to want to come back now. So, uh, but what if that was all just a play? That's one hell of a long con. <laughs> that's just that's just the the people who are obsessed with Cade trying to tie things together and bring him back somehow. It's just like with the well, with the new um, oops. the new there's a new game coming out and people are trying to make um, their characters come back as well but they died off a long time ago like legit killed so um they're just putting anything they can together to try and make themselves happy and think they're coming back yeah i mean they do have the people who are wanting k7 um there is some logic to what they're wanting um and some logic as to how they think they could go about it the problem lies in that i think k I think when Exo's reboot, if my lore knowledge serves me, uh, the Exo has to be alive, I think is one of the criteria, which Cade isn't and hasn't been for quite a while. Yeah. Um, I don't think you can reboot, because even when someone transfers from an, a human body to an Exo body, the human still has to be alive to do the transfer. They can't transfer, like their soul or whatever you want to call it into the body um so yeah i i don't think it'll happen i think it'd be cool but i don't i don't have a lot of hope for it yeah and then there's i guess maybe there's the possibility of another different voice actor but it I wouldn't be Cade though like people yeah, would be mad be then Cade. too it would just be a name it'd just be his name you know I think it's more yeah. likely that maybe Aldrin might become the new Cade, the new Hunter Vanguard. Yeah, this one's oh. going around for a while now. Also, speaking of Aldrin, um, was it just me, or did he have, like, a spider kind of robe on his, over his uh, chest piece? It he had definitely sort of had a fallen, fallen insignia. Yeah, he definitely had a fallen cloak of some kind. Um, but that's kind of the Awoken as a whole have always kind of traditionally been associated with the fallen. Yeah, but he also, there was a thing in the Vidoc um, where he was sitting in front of Spider and his, like, fallen guards were sitting there, like, poking their little spear sword things at him. Yeah, I think that's more because I think that's going to be some of that mistrust towards Aldrin that he doesn't understand. Yeah, but what is he uh, doing with the Spider? I don't know. I know our Guardian was there in that particular scene, too, so it could have been us... Um, going to meet spider and him there it's hard to tell um 
I, I don't think there's enough information to make any assumptions there. Also, something interesting I saw, um, he was wearing some very um, peculiar looking gauntlets, and I don't recognize them to be any uh, specific hunter exotics. So I think that he might be wearing another, it, it, it might be the set that we are getting, the weird um, throwing knife gauntlet. Or but, uh, his embrace. Yeah, yeah that, that if that's how you say it. I don't um, know. <laughs> I just took but, a shot uh, in the dark. I'm just I'm just speculating that maybe that's another exotic that uh, we can acquire maybe through a quest with him. Maybe. Um I feel like they probably showed all the exotic armor though. They don't usually hide armor pieces as much as they hide weapons. Yeah. Is they're just like really scaly and they have a nice uh, piece up there on the shoulder. It's like three uh, layers on it. It's just, they have some nice looking gauntlets. So I'm just hoping that I can adorn them in my <laughs> career. <laughs> do you think that uh, while we're on the topic of armor and stuff, do you think that the Cosmodrome will have a new armor set or will it be like the D1 armor set or... Um, it's hard to tell. Um, I know they said later on in the year we were getting a more fleshed out version of the Cosmodrome. Right now, the only bits of the Cosmodrome that we're getting are... Oh, they showed a picture. It's Skywatch, the Blind Shore, and the area where you first start, like just outside the wall. What's that place called? Um, yeah, um... What is that place called? I can't remember, but those are the only areas I think that they've showed us that we're actually getting right now. And then I think later, probably around December, they said a while back, we'll get probably the rest of the Cosmodrome, excluding the Plague Lands. Um, probably whenever Season of the Hunt is done, I assume. Whenever they launch the next season after that, we'll probably get the rest of the Cosmodrome. Would be my guess, but that's just a guess. Um, something else that I noticed, um, th when they tested, uh, or they were showing off the Warlock Gauntlet's abilities, it was distinctly in the Omnigal Strike, um, with yeah. the Thrall rush you at the beginning. So is Omnigal coming back, or at least Omnigal is coming back. I don't think she's the one coming back. We're getting one strike with Beyond Light, and then we're getting another two Cosmodrome strikes from D1 when they finish fleshing out the Cosmodrome. I don't know if Omnigal is the first one or not. But I know she is one of the ones that they mentioned we would be getting back. Yeah, it was Omnigal and Fallen Saber, wasn't it? Omnigal, Fallen Saber, and then I think Sepix is the one that's coming out with Beyond Light itself. The original strike on the Cosmodrome? Yeah, because they made a big deal about it being the definitive Destiny 2 strike, or definitive Destiny strike <laughs> experience. Yeah, well, I'm getting sniped by spider tanks from across the map, which sure was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then Black Hammer happened, and <laughs> they were eliminated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and Icebreaker. <laughs> Anything else? Mm -hmm. I can't really think of anything. Alright. So, um, I think that's going to probably do it for this video, guys. Really quick before I go, though, some kind of future plans for the channel. I think after we get through the initial sort of beyond light campaign on our main characters, yada yada, stuff like that. I think Chini and I, and possibly Reese, depending on his availability, are going to try and do the new new light experience. We're going to delete one of our characters and run through the new light stuff and just kind of see how it compares to the new light experience we have now, how it compares to our experience when we first started playing Destiny 2, um, <clears throat> see how beginner friendly it is, stuff like that. Uh, so that's a kind of little mini-series that I'll probably run on the channel at some point. And then another thing at some point I'm probably going to run is I'm going to try and do a Beyond Light a Destiny 2 kind of cinematic series. 
Um, Chini and Reese might join in, uh, depending on availability. Nothing's really set in stone yet. It's a very early stages, but it's probably going to happen. How many people it happens with is going to vary. It might just be me some days. Some days it might be all of us. Um, Reese is in school. Chini is working. So schedules vary a lot. Um, but that's something else that I'm probably going to do. But all of that stuff is going to come out after the... Probably at minimum the earliest episode would be a week after Beyond Light drops. Uh, because I want to get through all the actual Beyond Light content before I start doing other stuff just as a business move. Um, so you can look forward to that. This will probably be the last video I put up before Beyond Light unless something else groundbreaking comes out. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Jeannie and Reese, for being I here. bet they'll have something else. Probably. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks, Jeannie. Thanks, Reese, for being here. Sharing yep. your opinions. And I will catch you guys in Beyond Light. Bye.